Hello everyone, my name is Juni Che, and in this video, we will discuss how to scan your upper, lower, and the bite registration using the OVO intraoral scanner. So let's jump right in. Once you launch the 3Disc Clinic software, you'll have to select your account information on the left. In a previous video, we discussed how to create a new patient and also how to create a new case. But for demonstration purposes, I'll just start scanning immediately. And I can do that by selecting Start Scanning here. Once I select that option, it will immediately open up the scanning software. So before I go over the scan path and some of our techniques, I'll move forward and start scanning my upper real quick, and then we can discuss those points together. So you can see I scanned my full upper with the palette information in less than a minute. When you're scanning your upper, users will have to follow a specific scan path and techniques associated with it. This is the general rule of thumb for most intraoral scanners out there today. But you always want to start on your back molar. If that area is hard to reach, you can always start on a premolar as well. But the reason why you want to start on a molar is because there's so much distinct anatomy. All this anatomy is translating to reference data or point clouds. These point clouds are tiny little dots and as you're scanning, they form into tiny polygons. So the more time you spend scanning, capturing that detail, the tighter the polygons will be and that's what's constructing the 3D data. So if you ever lose track of scanning, let's say you're scanning and you feel some hesitation or lag, you can always roll over back to the occlusal surface and the scanner and the software will know exactly where you're at. So as I was scanning, I came down occlusally and once I hit that first canine unit, most people will zigzag or rock once they get to the incisal edges, but I just did a simple pass through capturing both my labial surface and my buccal surface. And once I hit the next canine unit, I came back up occlusally. Now this is the framework. This is the structure, the anchor that's holding the scan data down. So once you get through this framework, you can fly through the lingual surface or even the buckle without any hesitation. If you feel that you had some hiccups or bumps along the way, scanning the occlusal surface, you can always go back and rescan those certain areas. But I think my point is, this is very important that first pass through because it's going to determine the rest of the scanning experience for you and your patient. Now, once I got through that occlusal surface, I finished off by going through my buccal area and then also finishing it off with my lingual. So there is another tool here that I really like, which is the quality map. It's on the right-hand side. It looks like a little diamond. And if I click on that, this is going to give you a heat map or a color map of reliable data and unreliable data. So here, green is showing me reliable information. And then when you start seeing the red, yellow, or orange, this is showing us unreliable data. So a lot of people have a misconception and they think that they need to scan the full arch in green, but that is not necessary and it's overkill. The only time you really need to paint an area or scan an area green are the critical areas, areas such as your margin line or the contacts of your adjacent teeth. So if I start scanning, let's just imagine number 14 is my prepped area. I'll start painting or scanning the area green and I'll confirm that all this information is reliable. Thank you. 
I was very intentional on how I was turning and angling the scanner when I was scanning the surface data. Obviously, I don't have a prep tooth here, but in order to capture the interproximals, I had to angle the scanner at a 45 degree angle to capture these deep areas. Now, going back to the point clouds or polygons, you'll see towards the middle of the scan on my palette, there's red, orange, and yellow. This is indicating that the polygons or triangles are very wide or broad. The reason for this is because I didn't spend the time to scan that surface data and spend more time capturing that information. Again, for a single crown case, you don't need to scan everything in green, but for critical areas, the green area is going to show you very tight and compact triangles, and that's what's translating to accurate information. Now, before I start scanning my lower, I'd like to show you the live view window on the bottom left-hand side of the screen. The live view window is going to show you exactly what the cameras can see. And towards the middle of the screen, that's information that's being acquired by the software. Now, as I'm scanning, if I come off path, the software will stop because it doesn't know where we're at. But if I roll back over occlusally, again, it's going to notice the reference data and start scanning again. You almost have to keep your eyes on a swivel where you're looking at the live view window and then also looking towards the middle of the screen and also look at the patient and make sure the scanner is located properly. And as you keep your eyes on a swivel, it'll make the scanning much easier for both you and your patient. Okay, so now that we've talked about the live view window, let's go ahead and scan my lower. And you'll notice while I'm scanning, I'm not really retracting my lips or my cheek because we're using something called Fly AI, which is an algorithm built into our scanning software. So as you're scanning, if the software detects unwanted noise, such as your tongue, your lips, or your inner cheek, the algorithm will do a very good job of processing all that information out while you're scanning live. So let's move forward and scan my lower real quick here. So I scanned my lower in less than 30 seconds there, and the scan path is very similar to when we scanned the upper. I started on my back molar, I came down occlusally. Once I hit that first canine unit, I did a very simple pass through, capturing the labial and buccal surface. And as I hit the next canine unit, I came back up occlusally, and this is where the scan path is slightly different. Rather than rolling over to the buccal side, I came to the lingual side and I did a very simple pass through of the lingual, and then I finished off with the buckle. As I stated before, that first pass through is very important because you're gaining all of these important reference points or checkpoints. So if you ever lose track of scanning, you can always use the occlusal anatomy as reference data, and it will remember or notice exactly where you are. So we've scanned the upper and we've scanned the lower, Let's move forward and capture the bite. You can capture the bite by selecting bite alignment scan on the left-hand side. When you are capturing the bite, you will have to capture two bite registrations for a full arch case. If it's a quadrant scan, one bite scan will do. But for this demonstration, I'll first scan one bite registration and then I'll scan the second one after. Simple as that. You really want to try to get four units across and also make sure that you are scanning a lot of tissue because our software is not only using the buccal surface but also the tissue information as well. So I'll scan my second bite registration. Mm -hmm. 
and both bytes have been captured. Now that we've captured both byte registrations, you can see that the upper and lower have come into occlusion. If I want to hide the maxillary scan, I can select this icon on the top left hand side and hide it completely. If I want to dim the data, I can use this bar to dim it or to brighten it back up again. Also same thing with the mandibular scan. If I want to hide it, I select this icon and it will only show the maxillary scan. There are a few options on the bottom of the screen. There's manual alignment. So if you feel that the upper and lower haven't been aligned properly, there's a way to manually align it by selecting certain points on the surface data and it will automatically realign the upper and lower together in occlusion. Next, we have occlusal distance map. So this will show you all the contact points taking place. If I open the jaw, you can see that there's a color coordination here where it's showing you all the occlusal contacts in millimeters. And the last option here is swap jaws. So if you wanted to switch the maxillary to the mandibular or vice versa, you can do that. Now, once you've completed the case, we can select next on the top right hand corner and it will start to process the data. Once the case has finished post-processing, the software will bring you back into the Rx form and you can see the final output files. Here we have the upper and lower in occlusion. If I wanted to hide the lower, on the top left here, I can select this icon. And it will just show me my upper. You can see that the color information is there and all that detail has been implemented into this final output file. If I want to hide the upper and show the lower, same thing here. It shows you all the information and I can also select this option here, which will show me a monolithic view. So all the color goes away and it shows you almost like a stone model. Now from here, if you wanted to export the files directly onto your desktop, you can select export files and based on your selections down low, if you want to select a specific CAD program like ExoCAD or 3Shape, you have these options here and that will bring in the XYZ coordinates properly into that CAD software. Also for the file format, we have three options. We have STL, OBJ, and PLY. You can make these selections and it will export it properly. If you want to send this case to a lab, you have to make sure the lab is selected with a delivery date and you can select send to lab and your lab will receive it through 3Disk Cloud. We will create another video on how to send the case to a lab or how to export files onto your desktop. So please look for that video in our channel. We hope this information was helpful. And if you have any questions, please email support at 3disc.com and one of our representatives will be very happy to help you. Thank you.